If you watch YouTube videos regularly, then you've probably heard of BetterHelp. BetterHelp is here to help. BetterHelp is a program that has assisted over 600,000 people. Today's sponsor is the folks over at BetterHelp. Today's live show is sponsored by our friends over at BetterHelp. I'm working with BetterHelp to help provide another resource for you guys. Brought to you by BetterHelp.com slash DeFranco. I want to thank this video's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp has become one of the most prevalent sponsors on YouTube videos since 2018. But since its rise, it's found itself rife with scams. Handle, which begs the question, why are so many YouTubers still promoting them? Let's discuss BetterHelp's history of shady behavior and how by continuing to work with them, YouTubers and influencers are complicit in their bad behavior. BetterHelp is a digital teletherapy company that rose to fame in 2018 due to its massive push using influencer marketing. BetterHelp has a unique model of therapy because in addition to offering video conferencing, it also offers the option to send text messages to your therapist and call your therapist in your times of need. In addition to its generalized counseling, they also provide specific services geared towards Christians, teens, and the LGBT community. The cost of therapy ranges from $70 to $100 per week, which is billed every four weeks. So in other words, $280 to $400 hundred dollars a month. BetterHelp also does not accept any insurance, so you would have to pay 100% of the cost out of pocket. So in order to sign up for BetterHelp, you have to fill out a questionnaire that asks very specific and sensitive mental health information, such as whether you've experienced thoughts of wanting to unalive yourself, if you're on medication, if you identify as being a part of the LGBT community, and a bevy of other questions. And from there, they match you with a counselor based on your responses to those questions. Many people who've used BetterHelp in the past have taken to social media to talk about the absolutely horrifying, unprofessional behavior that their therapist exhibited on the app. Do not trust the BetterHelp therapist. They are so sketch. My one session with a BetterHelp therapist re-traumatized me to the point where I don't know if I'll ever go back to therapy again. Let me just demonstrate for you what I opened the video chat to that morning. Hi, I'm looking at your file but it says CPTSD instead of PTSD. What's the difference between, what's the C? The next 15 minutes of my therapy session were taken up by them expecting me to describe to them what the differences were between CPTSD and PTSD. Kind of something I would hope a trauma-informed mental health professional would know. During this time where this therapist is arguing with me back and forth about whether or not CPTSD is even a valid diagnosis, it is. They're wandering around their home like this. It just doesn't really make sense as a diagnosis because really it's the same thing as PTSD. And I have so many questions. Like why the shades? Why is your house dark at 8 a.m. in the morning? Those questions kind of end when this therapist pulls down their pants and uses the toilet in front of me on camera. They started to get up again, at which point I asked, I'm sorry, hold on, is this actually happening? To which they responded, yes, is there a problem? It was at this point that I shut my laptop and allowed myself a panic spiral as a treat. Did I reach out to BetterHelp? Yes. Did they do anything? No. I did BetterHelp for about three weeks and the straw that broke my back was when the therapist was in office for the first time the last time was in her living room and i was like i'm just gonna believe no one else is there um as i log on to the video she's talking to someone and then just stops talking it's like hey how are you so let's get started i'm like someone is in there so i i thought the person i like left and closed the door like about halfway through the meeting she gets up walks out an open door meaning there was no privacy goes into the lounge of like the office makes popcorn while I'm talking and then comes back with me like taking me with her through this whole journey of the office sits down and is eating popcorn with her mouth full just chewing what so i tried better help like a year ago and in my first meeting they're like well what are you struggling with and i tell them i have an anxiety disorder a panic disorder and i'm dealing with depression to which he goes i don't think you really have those disorders it's just society's fault because right now they're oppressing men you can't go out and compliment a woman without becoming a offender now i'm just gobsmacked by this just like uh, 
what? But he continues down this tangent. And then he goes, well, and you're also a straight white man. So, of course, you're the, the reason that everything in the world is bad. When, when you look at history and think about it, we're really the saviors of the world. Yeah, I closed the laptop after that and I was done. Don't do better help. You might get matched with a white supremacist. I am so glad that we are outing better help. You would not believe the experience I had with them. 2019, when I was experiencing the worst of my eating disorder, I had not opened up to a soul about it. I decided for the first time to try and advocate for myself. I downloaded BetterHelp. I was set up with this woman in America and they said that she was like an eating disorder specialist and I thought, oh great, okay, someone who'll actually get it. I started explaining to her like my symptoms, my thoughts and how awful my life was because of it. And she said something to me like, oh, is your BMI really that low that you're experiencing all these things? And I thought, right, that's not relevant. I just didn't even acknowledge that. But then I did tell her how much weight I had lost. I didn't tell her where my weight was at. It could have been anywhere on the BMI scale. But from what she had said earlier, she was assuming that it was like super low. Anyway, what she said to me there was, well, good for you. Congratulations on all that weight loss. Do not do better help. Do not do better help. And let me tell you why. I don't care if they don't sponsor me after this video, but do I have a story for you? A few weeks ago, I was very down bad. So I was like, Ryan, you need therapist for the first time ever like you've been wanting a therapist for years so it's finally time to do it but i live in japan so it's really hard to get a therapist here especially if you're a foreigner on top of finding an english-speaking therapist that's not a 500 bajillion dollars so i sought out to do better help which is what everyone does these days because it seems perfect it seems like it's this it seems unreal it seems too good to be true and it is i literally got a therapist it took like two days to find a therapist for me and i was like really excited i like had my appointments booked or whatever and so i have my appointment and the therapist that I got had like really good reviews or whatever. She was British, so she had a British accent. I was like, Slay. I really liked her actually. Until into the appointment, she had me doing Chinese acupuncture exercises, which is where I basically just say like words of affirmation and tap myself on different parts of my body, like mainly right here and right here under my eye. And she was basically just telling me what to say, which were just words of affirmation to myself, saying like, Oh, I love myself. I will not feel this way anymore. But one thing about me is I'm willing to give anything a shot. So I was like, Okay, I'll try it. I'm so down bad. Like, I'm just gonna try this. It seems like some bullshit, but whatever. But we're doing this for literally like 30 minutes. And she would go off of camera sometimes, like, and do other stuff while just like trying to come up with things that I should tell myself like it seemed like she really just did not care and it would get to a point that we were doing it for so long that she started repeating the same things that she was telling me to say so it just felt really weird but even after that I was like okay I'm just gonna do another session with her besides the Chinese acupuncture exercises I liked her so I was like okay I'm just gonna do another appointment with her and if I don't like it the second time then I'll change therapist so I do another one same thing she's going off of camera this time she's in Austria on vacation and she's doing the same thing with Chinese acupuncture exercises and I was not feeling it like it seemed like this was just like her routine with like every patient so I was like I'm gonna switch therapist so I click switch therapist immediately cuts off any sort of contact with her I can never talk to her again I'm like okay so now I have six other options of therapists I don't like any of them it's really weird so I'm like, I paid $300 for this month of this subscription, so I'm just gonna go back to my old therapist and do my last two sessions. No, can't do that, because it cut off all communication with her, so I have to pick from these, like, six therapists that I don't really vibe with. So I told it to match me with someone, it's like, this is gonna take 48 hours. I was like, babe, I literally don't have 48 hours, like, this subscription is ending. Only to be matched with a white woman with dreads. I immediately just, like, changed it and canceled my subscription. I was like, I'm not even doing this, I don't care about my last two sessions. Hello, I am here to tell you about how the therapy platform BetterHelp destroyed my mental health. Last year, I decided that I was ready to begin therapy again after a super traumatic therapy experience that left me saying I will never do that ever again in my life. I had come across the BetterHelp platform and I was like, okay, I can do this. You know, it's from my own home, I don't have to go anywhere, which is what my anxiety really roots from. Um, so I was like, okay, let's give it a shot. I was instantly matched with a wonderful therapist. I adored her. She had a very similar story to me and I had a feeling that she was gonna help me a ton. Most of my issues rooted from um, my miscarriage that I had in 2017 and the abandonment issues that followed that. So keep that in mind, abandonment issues. Absolutely loved her. I felt like she was really starting to help me a ton. I was just starting to be able to like, fully open up and then we were supposed to have a video session and I had like messaged to confirm and she didn't confirm so I still showed up to my video session and she wasn't there and I was like okay maybe she went on vacation and forgot to tell me because she had gone on vacation like a few weeks before which was fine um no she just never said anything ever again um she missed the next three video sessions like she full-on ghosted me no message, no like, hey, this isn't going to work, or hey, I think you'd be better off seeing someone else. No, nothing. Straight radio silence, which as someone with abandonment issues is not ideal. So I reached out to BetterHelp because I paid for all three of those sessions that she missed. Um, they were not helpful. They were like, oh, guys, you got to find someone new. And they connected me with someone else. It was terrible. Um, she only did text sessions, not video or call, which is not what I had signed up for. Um, and then that didn't work. So I connected with somebody else. Same thing. He wanted me to go through 
all of my traumas and it felt like just starting from scratch and it was super traumatic and brought up all of those like terrible things again he was very cold and insensitive i really did not like him i reached out to better help they said just keep trying just keep trying there's somebody out there for you and there wasn't and so i did not get refunded for any of the sessions that my therapist missed um i literally checked her facebook because i was so afraid that something happened to her nope just ghosted me. So a lot of the therapists that are on BetterHelp or a considerable amount, at least, don't do that as their full-time job. A lot of people are just moonlighting as therapists. So there's a large sentiment for a large swath of people who've used them in the past that BetterHelp is ran more akin to an Uber Eats or a DoorDash than a therapy service. BetterHelp has also been accused of trying to push conversion therapy onto a gay client. Caleb Hill signed up for BetterHelp and expressed that his biggest concern at the time was missing his family, who kicked him out of his house after learning that he was gay. He alleges that the therapist that he was matched with on BetterHelp recommended that he just, quote, stop being gay so he could reunite with his family. He said that although BetterHelp said that they would match you with someone who knows about your issues or try their best to do so, that this therapist did not specialize in LGBTQ issues. And he says that, in fact, the therapist's personal website says that he practices Christian counseling. And former BetterHelp therapists have also also spoken out about how they were encouraged to put quantity over quality of care in their therapy. So I was a therapist on BetterHelp for about three months earlier this year. And here's why I stopped using that platform and now just use my private practice. BetterHelp um, encourages therapists to have up to 50 clients in a week. So when you're on BetterHelp, there is a good chance that you are one out of 50 clients on that therapist schedule. And you can tell when you are number eight, nine, 10 on a therapist schedule, your therapist is not present with you. She is brain dead. That's why it is very important to me in my private practice to have a very limited number of slots available for people because I know that you're making an investment and in order for me to follow through on those promises that are made, I need to be rejuvenated, I need to be present, and I need to be in it with you, which is where the fun comes in and that's why I love my job. And half the clients I would get on better help, I would be their second, third, fourth therapist. And they were like, oh my God, thank God you're showing up on time and that you're, you know, actually present with me. You mean like doing the very bare minimum of the ther what a therapist should do? And therapists across social media have shared similar sentiments about the lack of professionalism. Like this Reddit user who says... Do not use BetterHelp. This is in no way to hate on the team. I know trying to do great things with their platform and encouraging self-help. By all means, get that bag. But as a licensed therapist myself and former client of BetterHelp, just to try it, it's a horrible, unethical, and unprofessional service. They charge people up the ass and offer very, very mediocre, mediocre is generous, services. The therapists are not paid enough and BetterHelp doesn't make it worthwhile for the therapist to offer better care anyway. They put therapists in an impossible position, which leads them to choose between quality or quantity. And if you choose quality, you're basically working for free. As a therapist and neurodivergent person, I would highly discourage anyone from using this service. It seems to me, based on many anecdotes that I've read online, many people feel as though these therapists do not have trauma-informed care. They seem to be just trying to make a quick buck. They don't demonstrate a particularly patient-centered care model. Unprofessional seems to be an understatement for the way that these therapists are acting, according to these anecdotes that people are sharing on social media. So the unprofessionalism of their therapists is bad enough. They've also found themselves embroiled in legal controversy due to unsavory practices with client data. Earlier, we talked about the questionnaire, right, that everyone has to fill out before they can sign up for BetterHelp. So within that questionnaire, there was language that said that they promised to keep health information private, but they did not, in fact, do that. And this is from the Federal Trade Commission, or FTC for short's official website. They say, BetterHelp reportedly pushed people to take an intake questionnaire and hand over sensitive health information through unavoidable prompts. And it promised to keep that information private through statements like, rest assured, any information provided in this questionnaire 
will stay private between you and your counselor. But from the FTC's perspective, a truthful statement would have been, rest assured, we plan to share your information with major advertising platforms, including Facebook, Snapchat, Critio, and Pinterest. So BetterHelp used a variety of tactics to share the health information of over 7 million consumers to target them with ads to refer their Facebook friends to BetterHelp. So the FTC also says that BetterHelp also broke its privacy promises by disclosing to Snapchat the IP addresses and email addresses of approximately 5.6 million former visitors to target them with BetterHelp ads. So according to the FTC, by using this information, BetterHelp was able to garner hundreds of thousands of people to sign up for their service, which resulted in millions of dollars of additional revenue for them. So ultimately, BetterHelp was ordered to pay $7.8 million to people who used their service between 2017 and 2020. Now, this is just a personal qualm. I talked about this before in my video about the loneliness epidemic and how people have this false sense of friendship through social media. People think that if they're liking your pictures and they're commenting on your pictures, and even if they're like sending you DMs on Instagram, that that's a healthy friendship. But I don't believe that that constitutes as a real friendship. So similarly, when it comes to texting, I don't know that you could have substantive conversations about real life issues that you're having via text message. That's just my opinion. And I also don't like the idea of like texting at any moment. I think that therapy, having a scheduled visit at a very specific time with your therapist allows you to have to practice things like self-regulation and grounding in the moment. And it concerns me the idea that I can just reach for my phone and text my therapist as opposed to just dealing and internalizing and self-regulating like in that moment and then waiting to discuss those things with my therapist at a scheduled time once a week, twice a week, every other week. Because if I have a fear of social interactions and going out all the time and I'm just texting my therapist through the phone, how is that helping me? I worry that the convenience of being able to just text your therapist or have a quick little chat with your therapist doesn't really give you the tools in order to function in the real world. But that's just me. Listen, I'm sure that there's been people out there who have gotten a positive experience out of BetterHelp, but I think that there's enough information out there for people who have ethics and morals to be doubtful of their services and not promote them anymore. I'm a big believer in if you're going to be sponsored by a company that it is your responsibility to do your due diligence, to do your research. It doesn't take a lot of effort. Literally, all you have to do is open up google.com and search whatever the brand is that you're promoting and the word controversy. Within five minutes of a Google search of better help and controversy, you will find a CVS receipts worth of information. Some things are allegedly, some things not so allegedly because they were order to pay this money by the FTC. All of this better help controversy really underscores just the problem with the intersection of capitalism and therapy. The idea that you would use someone's sensitive health information also that you can make a profit is so terrible to me. And I have a high bar of ethics and morals. To me, that's cause enough to never work with them. And then when you talk about all of these people sharing all of these horrible, horrible stories about their interactions with these therapists, that seems like the last nail in the coffin. But the problem is that so many YouTubers and influencers unfortunately prioritize profit over, I don't know, actual morals and ethics. I'm sure BetterHelp pays very generously. From what I hear, they pay very well. And that's why it's an incentive for people to not want to do any research, to not want to think critically, because after all, they're making money off of it. Now you can make the argument that some of these YouTubers maybe didn't know what BetterHelp was all about and all about their history. But if they didn't know, it really underscores the willful ignorance that some YouTubers participate in when there's a financial incentive to do so. When I start to see any one brand a little bit too much in people's sponsorships, it makes me immediately question their ethics and morals because why are you literally everywhere? Why do you have a monopoly on the YouTube sponsorships? My spidey senses tell me that something's up. And I want to be clear, there's nothing wrong with doing sponsorships. I want to be 100% crystal clear with that. When you're a full-time creator, the creator economy is very unpredictable at best. So people have to do sponsorships in order to supplement their incomes or want to do. I don't know about have to do, but it definitely helps. Okay, it definitely helps and there's nothing wrong with it, but it is your responsibility as a YouTuber, even for me, I don't have a super, super large following, but I love the hell out of all of you guys who subscribe to me. I respect the hell out of all of you guys. So at the very least, I am going to do research with any brand that I'm going to potentially work with. And I've left 
a lot of money on the table that some people would be like, you're a crazy girl. Why, why wouldn't you just take that sponsorship? Because I have ethics, because I have morals. We would not be able to do what we're doing if it wasn't for you guys watching us. We would not be able to do what we're doing if it wasn't for you guys. So at the very least, out of respect for you, I am going to vet the sponsor before I promote them. And by the way, a lot of these creators who are promoting better help are not small creators who are struggling. These are creators with hundreds of thousands, if not millions of subscribers. And so they're not struggling. They're not hurting financially. It would be nothing for them to just say, you know what? No, we're not gonna do that because I don't agree with your ethics and what you stand for. It would be nothing for them to do that. But greed, that greed, some people can't say no to a check. This capitalistic, individualistic mindset of as long as the check clears, as long as I'm okay, I don't care about the millions of people who got their data stolen. Mm -mm. All of these people who are sharing these horrific experiences, where there's smoke, there's fire. And there's a little bit too much smoke. <coughs> That's me struggling to breathe because there's too much smoke. <coughs> But I would love to hear from you all in the comments down below. Have you guys used BetterHelp? What have been your experiences with it? Do you have a horrifying experience with BetterHelp? I'd love to hear from you all in the comments down below. And if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up because we talk a lot about corporate greed, capitalism, consumerism, and the exploitation of it all. So definitely give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And I can't wait to talk to you all next time.